everybody. Welcome. Welcome back. Pizza day, pizza day. Okay, so I'm Miranda. I'm Phoebe. And we're Quintessential Baker. And we are going to show you how to make grain-free pizza today. And um, we're wearing our circus culture swag today because if you're local to Ithaca, right after this, well, a little bit after this, at 3.30, we're going to bring pizza down to circus culture. And so meet us there if you want to taste. It's not like you're going to get a whole slice or anything. It'll be more like a sample. Little, yeah, but we just want to, like, share the love with everybody. So it'll be so awesome. Yes. All right. Um, before we start, I just wanted to say that we had great success with our cinnamon buns yesterday. We brought, um, we teamed up with um, Melissa from Sweet Melissa's and used um, her kitchen up in Trumansburg and created some amazing cinnamon buns and yum, sold yum, out yum. of all of them. So, so we are, well, it's up to Phoebe whether we do it next weekend because yeah. I'll be out of town. Um, and that reminds me, we won't be doing a live next week because I won't be here. Um, but definitely the weekend after, that'll yep. be the first weekend in March. Yeah. We will be back live, and we will also be back in the alley with cinnamon buns. So pre-order is where it's at for that, so you don't miss out. Definitely. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with our cinnamon, I'm mean, sorry, <laughs> I'll be talking cinnamon pizza. Cinnamon pizza. Cinnamon pizza. Cinnamon pizza. Hey. Hey, that dessert, would be a thing. Dessert pizza. All right. Mm. So we're going to be measuring out our ingredients into um, our mixing bowl on our scale. And I've mentioned this before, but having a scale is very important. Like you can't do it without it. Definitely. Um, you won't be accurate and it won't work out well. And is there a scoop in there? Yes, is there, there is. There? Okay. So I'm going to refer to my recipe so that I do not forget the exact amounts. We're going to make the... Uh, three pizza batch so I have a table in the recipe on the on the blog that shows different amounts for like the amount of pizza that you want to make so um, this is what I call the three pizza batch it could technically be made into four pizzas if you like your your crust extra thin or if you have a smaller pizza stone or you know you just want to like you have four people in your family and you want to make four different pizzas everyone gets their own something hey, like question that. yeah what if you don't have a pizza stone if you don't have a pizza stone a baking sheet will be just fine. If you could preheat it in the oven as hot as it could be and then transfer it from one pizza, from one cookie sheet to that hot cookie sheet when you put it in the oven, that would be even better. Um, it'll just take a little bit longer to cook maybe. Yeah. No biggie. And we're baking on parchment paper also. On parchment paper, so there's no sticking happening anyway. It works so. out really nice. It's yeah. one of my favorite things in the kitchen is parchment paper. Yeah. But a pizza stone is not really that expensive. I think you can get one at Target for like 20, 25, something like that. So yeah. it's, it's totally worth having. I just leave mine in the oven all the time because it just creates um, an evenness of temperature in the mm -hmm. oven. It soaks up all the heat and then it radiates out. So you don't get that like every time you open the oven, you'll, you'll lose some degrees of temperature. But right. it helps it not do that as much. So. The other thing is, um, let's talk about our flour blend for just oh, a second. Yes, and you very get, important, right? You can get our flour blend. You can get our um, the recipe, the recipe for, it. for it through the baking guide, mm -hmm. and that's crucial. From now on, um, all the recipes are going to be based on the blends that are called out in the baking guide. So um, that's my intellectual property. That's what I've been working years and years and years on creating a blend. She did an amazing job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A blend that is kind of an all-purpose substitute for for wheat flour. Um, so with a little tweaks here and there, the right percentage of psyllium, um, you're good to go. So for ten bucks, you get the baking guide. You get all the tips and tricks. You get the the, the sourcing for the ingredients. You get the the uh, just tips for success and to know what to expect and all that. And some of that information is in the recipes, but more of it is in the baking guide. And from then on, you're like, you're set. You can join with us and make awesome It's so stuff. worth it. We, uh, my family have gone through all kinds of grain-free, gluten-free, flour blends on the market. I don't do nightshades. Potato starch is in all of those blends. So if you can't starch, do nightshades, rice flour. this is, this yeah. is the blend for you. Yep. Um, and it's by far the best. I love the texture. It's perfect. So um, head over there and um, grab the baking guide. All right. So that said, we're going to be using the grain free, grain free flour blend. This is this happens to be version number two. There's three different blends, including a nut free one. Uh, so whatever version two, uh, but you can use one or you can use the um, nut free. I haven't nailed that recipe down, but as soon as I get a chance to try it out or let you know what the best thing is. But anyway, we're going to go 450 grams 
of the grain free flour, flour blend, yep. which is nice and soft. Such a nice blend. <clears throat> scoop, scoop, scoop. I will get prepped for the psyllium. Awesome. We're at 290. Ways to go. Yeah. <laughs> I took a chance on that one. Somebody mentioned last week about like, oh, you guys, where's your aprons? You know, like, I can't believe you didn't get flour all over yourselves. And I'm like, uh, yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was covered. We'll have to get some uh, quintessential baker aprons. All right, we got our. Oh, I'm going. Phoebe's I'm being, going. Phoebe's being I'm picky. Going for it. She's going for the exact. I know. I usually don't look. Oh, oh good. Oh, and whatever. <laughs> Four fifty one. Okay, so then we use thirty grams of psyllium. Now this is again, this is psyllium powder, powder. not so, psyllium husk. Although you can use the husk, it just works in a little differently. It's just not going to be as good, but it, it'll be in a pinch. It'll be fine. I have to get this ordered on Amazon online, um, but. Psyllium husk powder is red, readily available in grocery stores um, in the natural food section. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been able to find it at our local Green Star. It's so. Oh, I don't know about Green Star, but yeah. in Wegmans, it's in the uh, natural section in the like medicines, like metamucily kind of place. Oh, like the powder, not the husk? No, I can't find No, you can't find the powder. The, powder. Yeah. the husk you can get. I can yeah. get the husk around town, but not the powder. Got it. So, okay, so a tablespoon of yeast. Oh, that's something we didn't get. Yep. You grab the yeast, and I'll do a tablespoon of salt. And just clean. And we use the instant yeast. Yeah, that's nice. It's nice Rapid because ice. it. Um, you don't have to worry about proofing it in liquid first. You can mix it right into the dry ingredient. So a tablespoon of that. Tablespoon of yeast. Yep. Tablespoon going in. And then um, a half a tablespoon or a, a teaspoon and a half. Same thing of sugar. Um, now, a couple times this week, talking to people about the cinnamon buns, the, the concept of you have sugar in your recipes came up. And my answer to that is, yeah, it's for the yeast. I put a little tiny bit in a large batch of dough, and it just helps the yeast do it. their thing and puff up the dough in the oven and make it nice. And you can leave it out if you want to. It's not a big deal. Um, or even, like with the cinnamon buns, you could replace the little bit of sugar with any any sweetener that, that you do eat. So if you mm -hmm. do honey, you could use honey, that sort of thing. Um, or you can just leave it out knowing that the rise is going to take a little bit longer. Yep. Okay, so that's all the dry ingredients. So we'll go ahead and put that over on our mixer stand and give it a little swirl so that all the psyllium mixes in really well with the flour. And then we want to measure... We want to measure out 600 grams, oh sorry, 450 grams of water. Again, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can do this by hand. Yeah. You can you use a hand mixer. Yep. That's what I do at home. It works fine. Mm -hmm. um, what did you 450. say? 450. If you don't know, 450 grams of water is about equivalent to 450 milliliters of water. So you can look at the markings on your on your um, cup and to shoot for it. You know, um, I just go by the scale four, for four, four. for the you angel numbers. Oh, getting closer. <laughs> I'm gonna turn you in. Okay, that's right. good. That's good. You're gonna turn me into a wonky baker, and, and I'm gonna turn I know you're you into like I know. Like, it's good enough. It's good enough. It's good enough. <laughs> So then um, we're going to go ahead and add the last ingredient, which is um, olive oil. And I like to use a nice, um, nice flavored olive oil because it does contribute flavor to, to, the, uh, to the dough. You can use really any oil that you want. I just happen to like to add that nice flavor. So I go ahead and put it straight into the mixer because then I don't have another dish to wash because if there's oil in the, the measuring cup there, I have to wash it. If it's just water, I don't. And also this oil will not start to activate the psyllium that's in the dough here. So um, you don't have to hurry. All righty. Let's just crank this up. So you want to put it on low and then dump all at once. Let it go. All at once. Sweet. And then you start to increase the speed. We're not showing everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know because it's the computer's coming. Yeah. Should I try? Hi, 
think it's okay. All right, let's do it. All right, starts off really wet. Yeah. Then it starts coming together, coming together, coming together. To grab her. And it's stickiness. You can start seeing the tackiness of it. And then you want to just turn off the mixer and gather. Yeah, if it's like the sides. The it's a little um you can kind of see. It's still a little goopy, right? Like it's not, it doesn't look like that ball of well kneaded dough that you would. You're gonna have. be like, the first time I made it, I was like, <laughs> this, ah, I messed I it up. It. I messed it up. But you have to give it time for the psyllium will absorb the water. Right. And um when you come back to it, you will have a nice ball. Yeah. Baker speak. It needs to hydrate. 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 So, okay, I'm being picky here, but scoop it off. And then I will go ahead and take this off and show you guys. Um, you know, it's just like, it's a little goopy, but it's already starting to solidify up. Here, hold it up a little bit more. Yeah. It's just, it's goopy, but it, I yeah. mean, it's so much more solid than it was even just like 45 yeah. seconds ago. So I'm just gonna put this into a little bit of a ball. Um, no real good reason, just makes it easy to get it out if it's already sort of all together. Yeah. And then basically you let that sit until you get your, your uh, cook area or your shaping area set up. So we're just gonna move some things. I'm gonna set that over there. Um, now, the easiest thing to do is to not worry about like dusting the counter a lot and trying to keep it from sticking and then tra transferring. You just literally take a piece of parchment paper, nice little square, because usually uh, baking stones are round, and or the square, I should say, but they could be round. But anyway, you want well, a nice round. round. Well, pizzas are round. Well, my my stone is round. Yeah. Well, I got one of each. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, so set that down on the counter, and then I do use just a teeny tiny little bit of um, the dusting flour, and this recipe is in the guide as well. Pretty simple, but it's in there. And then we just dump it. No, wait, no. First, you divide it. So this was a three pizza. But I'm going to show you guys how cutting it into quarters is just as good. It'll just be a little smaller, just a little teeny bit. Plus, it's easier to take a lump of dough and divide it into quarters than it is to thirds. I'm going to make another one at the same time. Or. No, no, we're just we're just showing people right. how to do it. We've already got a pizza that's done, so as soon as we're done showing you how to make it, we'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. Yep, we're getting fancy. We are. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of flour underneath to keep it from like really, really sticking, and maybe even just a little bit on top to keep it from sticking to the the rolling pin. And then you just want to roll it out like as large as it'll go into this square of parchment. Don't worry about over processing the dough. Nope. No need to worry about that. It'll be just fine. If you make a mistake, give it a little tuck, push it back together, roll yep. it out. Totally fine. Yep. All good. Oops, getting a little sticky. A little more dusting. A little more dusting. Like, I don't see anybody online with us today. That's, that's sad. We like hanging out with you guys. That's okay. You can see us over on you on our YouTube channel. Yeah, we'll be uploading this after we're done. We'll put links to the guide. Yep. Links to this recipe. All in one place. All right. So basically, it's really nice and thin. Like, just it does not even a perfect shape. Doesn't matter. Um, you want it about an eighth of an inch thick. It's gonna puff up about double right. once it's in the oven. And then because we just rolled it out. We still want to have a, an edge to the crust, so you just you just basically turn it, it under, tuck under. Just a little. First time curl. I made it, I made it with the kids, and we were tucking over, so we were doing this way instead of yeah, under. Under. But under looks so nice. Looks like looks nice. Yeah, looks like real pizza. And it's um, it's very forgiving dough. Like Katie said, if you if you tear it, just smush it back together. Yep. Um. You know, like it's sticking to the parchment a little bit here, and I'm just having to sort of rip it off. The important thing is you're just making an edge to uh, hold in the, the sauce and the cheese and whatever you put on it. Just rolling over. 
And there's no fighting with the dough like you would with a wheat dough. Um, it would just be like pulling back in and just like the gluten wants to be a bully and do its own thing. But this is like very giant. It stays put where you roll it. Yep. So this, this is about the size you would get if you had, uh, if you turned it into four piece pizzas instead of three. So it's more like, like a 10 inch. Mm -hmm. say that? 10 yeah. Inches? Yeah. So now it's ready to go. Um, put whatever you want on it and your oven, hopefully by the time you've gone through this whole process, will be fully heated. I like to give it a full half an hour because the hotter the oven, the better the cooking. Yeah. It cooks it quick and fast. Like the best thing would be if you had like wood fired pizza oven, you know, Oh, someday. Mm. Um, yeah, because they get up to like 600, 900, or 700, yeah. 900 degrees, something yeah. like that. So take your favorite pizza sauce. Um, this is mine. I actually make this. Just use a can of tomato sauce and then add in the spices. Mm -hmm. um, I should put that up on the blog. Great idea. I think I'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, but lots of people just use store-made pizza sauce and it's fine. Whatever your favorite is. All right. A little bit around. You want to grab the cheese? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> All right. And then sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Now, if you are non dairy, I have made with success cashew mm -hmm. yes. cheese, which is totally delicious. And we could link to our favorite. Yeah. Yeah, um, find that link and help you out. Super easy to make. Mm -hmm. Can make it really quick, and it melts just like oh, mozzarella. it's perfect. perfect. My stuff. son loves it. It's really perfect. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Um, that TV magic. We're gonna take the pizza oh, away. Let me grab my magical. Stuff. How much cheese you want on this? That's good. That's good. You always want to go a little cheese. bit less than you think because it does melt out and then spill everywhere and be like so. If you have a pizza peel, which I do, um, which is really great. You can use awesome. a flat cookie sheet. You can use a flat cookie sheet. So that's will, great. I will take this away. We're putting it in. Actually, I, I am putting it's it in the oven. Magical. <laughs> it's going to be super magical. That's, set the oven for 10 minutes. Actually, 7 to 10. Okay. Because everyone likes their pizza differently. Yeah. So I just like to, I like to check it a lot. I just check it. Ooh, are you done yet? Ta -da, magic. Whoa, look at how delicious that is. Yay. Woo. I mean, you guys can't smell it or taste it unless you come over to Circus Culture at 3.30, but it's basically pizza. And I've served this to people who had no idea that it was grain-free and their minds are kind of blown when I tell them. They, they yeah, don't believe it's me. Great. <laughs> it's a nice crust. Yeah. 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 So I think that's... Unless you've got anything else you want to say. I don't think so. You. See, guys, how easy is that? What is it's like it's like not even not even two o'clock yet, and we just made pizza. Super fast. Easy peasy. You didn't even have to wait for it to rise. You could. No. You, we have some other dough for the, the um, pizza we're making later for circus culture that's been sitting on the counter for a couple hours just developing flavor. Right. And but if you great. need it just quick, you need it make fast, it. this is as fast as it can go. It's so. fantastic. Oh, Amy joined us. Hi, Amy. You'll have Hi, to go Amy. back and watch the replay because we're like almost done. We're just about done. <laughs> but then here's the pizza. Yeah. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> Cheese pizza. Woo -hoo. Okay. okay. I think that's good. We'll see you guys Thanks. in a few weeks. Yeah. Right. Bye. Bye.